recording and then I will share. So I'm happy to be the slide monkey. Okay. Right. Um, right. I think we're ready. Hello everybody and welcome to the Cisco Cyber Champs Goal Sprint. Um, this is the first webinar for the Goal Sprint and it is focused on the world of cybersecurity and the attacks that are out there. Today's webinar is hosted by myself, Nicole and Bryony. Um, both of us work in um, education within the cybersecurity field. We are also supported by Elizabeth, who works for Cisco, and Andrew at The Open University. Okay, so the first question then, what actually is cybersecurity? Okay, so cybersecurity, the main thing is protecting your computers, your networks, um, and data from those hackers or those bad guys. Um, and when we say hackers, we do want to think of those malicious hackers that are out there trying to steal or damage those systems. Um, and again, it's usually for their own game or political gain or other mechanisms like that. Um, and it does involve using a number of different tools and practices. Um, and really to ensure that you're keeping your system secure, you do need to also incorporate your tools and practices. Um, and that includes the likes of your antivirus software, firewalls and also encryption. And with cybersecurity, the three main aspects that you want to consider is ensuring to keep everything confidential and um, your integrity and also your um, availability. Um, and that is your CIA triad. And we will come back and look at that again. OK, so who and what are the threats? Um, so there is a number of different threats out there and they are really combined into different areas. Um, the first one that we are going to look at is your malware um, and that is um, known as um, an umbrella term really for your malicious software. And it does cover a number of things such as your viruses, your worms, um, ransomware and so forth. Um, we also have phishing. And you may receive the likes of a phishing email, or um, it can be across a number of different tools. So through text message, and um, also web or web websites as well. And with that, it's somebody trying to pretend that they are somebody else, and um, to try and gain information from their victim. Hacking, um, and that does cover everything abroad term and um, so it might be trying to hack into a system through the likes of password cracking um, and that can be done in a number of different ways through just guessing a password or using um, a dictionary type of attack. Denial of service attacks this actually prevents users from gaining access to the system um, and it can be really as simple as maybe taking away your ethernet cable and preventing internet access that way and um, to more severe types of attacks using your distributed denial of service attacks that has a number of bots included. And um, we also have your insider threats and those are people that are actually within the organization itself um, and do actually have that further bit of information. You have social engineering then, and really with social engineering, what you're trying to do is actually attack the human element rather than attack the system itself. Okay, so you're trying to trick the user into providing that information. And that can be done through the likes of a phishing attack that we've already just mentioned. Then we have social or advanced persistent threats. And again, that's where your threats are advanced. They are persistent, so they're continuously going until they gain that access. And then finally, your zero day exploits. And with that, that's when it has first become known. Okay, so there is actually no um, countermeasures directly put in place at that stage. Okay, and it, there is limited detail around that exploit. 
with that, but we will go through these in a wee bit more detail. Okay, so malware. Um, as I've mentioned, it is your malicious software. Um, it really can be the likes of a digital virus that infects your computers, your smartphones, or any other device. Um, and with devices today, there's so many different devices that are connected to the networks as such. And um, so you do need to consider this. Um, for example, you have your Internet of Things devices, you have your network devices, such as your switches, your routers, so forth. Um, but then again, you have the majority of your host devices, which includes your computers, your smartphones, um, tablets, laptops, etc. Um, and really, how can malware um, attack your machine or your system? Um, it can be sent through the likes of an email. Um, so with some emails you may say that's maybe a spam email as such and it's saying please click on this link um, to access such and such and when you click on that you see an executable file being downloaded. Um, it can be done through downloads um, from visiting a website or it can actually be done through the likes of your USB pens um, that has been put into your PC. Um, but it can damage your device. It also allows for stealing personal information. Um, so, for example, with that, um, a keylogger, which actually um, takes the details of everything that you're pressing on your keys um, or keyboard, um, and your spyware as well, um, identifying everything that is being done on the machine. And finally, it can also take control um, without you even knowing that. Um, and really, when it comes to protecting your um, systems, it is similar to trying to provide or protect yourself from getting sick um, and avoiding germs. Um, so you do protect your devices by being careful about what you click on and using your antivirus software. So just be wary and double check everything before just clicking on any links that have maybe come through emails or websites, double check that they are secure, that you're not going on to a website that maybe you think is legitimate when it's not. Okay, so phishing, um, really with phishing, it's like a calling artist pretending to be someone that you trust. And that might be the likes of your bank account or a friend. And they do try and trick you into giving away personal information. And that may include your passwords or your credit card numbers. So um, they do often send your fake emails or messages with urgent requests. And they really do hope that you click on the link or reply with that sensitive information. Um, and for example, you may have received um, some of these and they do say they're maybe from um, the government, for example, or it may say it's from your bank and they do want you to reply as soon as possible. Um, and with phishing, there is a number of different types of phishing. Um, so you have your email phishing um, and that's really sent an email. You have your smishing, which is actually text message um, and then farming, which is the website version. All right, and then you do have more specific ones like um, spear phishing, and you're targeting a specific type of individuals rather than it just being broadly sent out to everybody. Um, you do really need to be cautious um, and verify the legitimacy of your unexpected requests, and then this is helping you avoid falling for their tricks. Um, so do just double check who it's come from. For example, if you've received a message that's claiming to be your bank account, check the number, make sure that it isn't just a random number um, and it does actually come up with the correct name. Um, when it comes to phishing, do check your email address that it has been sent from rather than just go on and clicking on the links. Hacking. Um, and really what you're doing is breaking into the digital vault. Um, so instead of using a lockpick, 
um, to gain access through a door. Hackers use their computer skills to find the weaknesses in the computer systems or the networks. And this does allow them to steal information, cause damage or take control of a system. And with um, hacking, there is a number of things. Um, so you may wish to try and gain access and that may be from password cracking to gain that initial access. You may have gained access as a basic type user but you may want to use privilege escalation to move across and actually gain those um, admin rights as well and um, to do further things within the system. Um, so with hacking, it does involve a number of different steps and does cover a wide range of different tasks as such. Um, and really, you do need to be really cautious with hacking um, and making sure that securities um, of any organization, really, they have the appropriate security in place, that they use their firewalls, um, that there's encryption in place, and that data is not being transferred across in plain text. Um, and also really just being cautious and that that user training is there and that the individuals know what they should be looking out for. Okay, denial of service then. Um, and really this is preventing that access to the system. Um, so it's like overwhelming a store with fake customers so real ones can't get through the doors. Um, hackers really flood a website or online service with lots of fake requests, like clicking refresh over and over again. And really that, that gets it to um, be so busy that it crashes and those legitimate users then can't gain that access. Um, with your denial of service, you do have a number of different types of attacks. You have your denial of service, but you also have your distributed denial of service. And with your distributed denial of service, you will have a herder at the top and they will take over a number of bots um, or robots. And what those robots will be doing will all be targeting that one server. And then that means that there's so many requests being sent, it, it's not capable to cope with the um, number of requests being sent. And again, they do crash. So it makes the website unavailable to real users who want to use it. And it's like, preventing that access. Insider threats. Um, so your insider is like having a spy on your team. And when someone who works within a company or organization, like your employer or contractor, in, or, inter, or intentionally or accidentally causes harm. Um, so for example, um, it might be somebody that is fed up working at the organization that might be got annoyed or a disgruntled employee and they may think to themselves I'm not happy here what can I do maybe to make money um, or they may be deciding that they're going to change jobs shortly and they're thinking how can I basically take some of this information with me um, or even it's um, your contractors and they're in and out of the organization so they do have Bit of knowledge around the organization's internal internal structure um, and then they use that information maybe to steal sensitive information it could also be to sabotage sabotage the systems so if they're um maybe working for um a compet a competitor they might decide right well we want to actually sell that information to a competitor so that other competitor is actually getting those customers um, and they may do things like that. Again, it is malicious um, and it is something that does need to be considered, but they do have that further information about the organization, so they can be very, very dangerous. Um, social engineering and um, really you're being tricked by um, a master storyteller. So really they are trying to trick you. They are trying to attack or hack the human element rather than attacking the system itself. Um, and really they do manipulate people by giving away sensitive information or doing something they shouldn't. And with um, social engineering, they do use a number of different techniques. So urgency being one, they may say, we need this information as soon as possible. Um, it may be through fear, so they may pretend to be the likes of the police um, or somebody that maybe the individual thinks, oh, 
they are a legitimate person, um, I need to get that information to them as soon as possible. Um, but really, they do pretend to be a trusted person and use psychology um, to gain the trust and get what they want. And again, it can be seen as a con artist. And they they do get you to do this without you even realising it. Um, with that, really, user awareness is the main thing that needs to be considered. So organisations will have a number of cybersecurity um, policies in place, but they will also have cybersecurity training. And it will give you some countermeasures and tips and tricks and what you need to look out for to help prevent against social engineering and to recognise the techniques that those hackers use. I think I'm taking this one now, aren't I? So, yeah. <laughs> so, there's that. Oh, sorry, I can't talk already. Advanced persistent threats. I like this statement. They're like a stealthy cyber ninja. This was the best picture I could find. It didn't look too violent. So, with this one, it's usually a group of people who have access to your network or your system and they're sitting there undetected. You don't know they're there. So, that's how good they are. They're kind of hiding in the shadows. And what they then do is they'll gather information or they'll cause some damage over time that isn't massively noticeable. So it's not something significant that you can see is happening straight away. So it's like having a secret agent sneaking around trying to all your digital defences, trying to stay hidden and trying to do harm for as long as possible. So it's kind of, I suppose, the ultimate attack. Hacking gets you access, you can get out quite quickly, but if you've got this advanced persistent threat, you're a constant threat. And then the next one, not that my presentation is working, is zero day exploits. So these are surprise attacks. They're called zero day because we don't know about them until they happen. And it's a cyber threat or a vulnerability that's been leveraged to cause an issue. And it could be something really simple in a piece of software that nobody knows about. And the malicious person will use that to their advantage. But the nice person would probably report that to the company. There is not really any way that we can um, protect ourselves against this because how can you protect yourself against something you don't know? So analogy for this one, it's like a burglar finding a secret way into a house even the owners don't know about yet. So a little bit harder to try and mitigate. It's not all doom and gloom though. Nicole talked about links and not clicking on things unless you know what they are, but luckily I know what these links are, so we're safe. But I was looking at some recent attacks that we could talk about, and there are loads. And BBC News tech section is pretty good for giving updates. Um, the Guardian as well are usually reputable sites to have a look at. But these hacks, every time we think about them, they're always the big things. Like NASA getting hacked, or Apple, or Microsoft. But little things happen as well that cause major issues. So one example here, and Nicole, let me know if this page is loading properly. It hasn't just opened yet. Yeah, okay. Are let's... you sure maybe just your... Yeah, let's stop sharing and share again. Than... Yeah. Um, this is just proof that um, even computing people do stuff wrong all the time. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, go, that's it, don't I? That's it, great. So, cybersecurity attack, this was recently, um, could cost the council £500,000, and it was in the Western Isles, up in Scotland. And it wasn't anything major, but it caused disruption to the IT systems. But that's a lot of money, especially for a council. And another attack that I saw that kind of made me laugh was this one here. They have managed to cause the street lights in Leicester to stay permanently on. Again, not really a big issue apart from the energy consumption at the moment, but it doesn't always have to be about money or gaining anything. It can be just because they can do something. So, as I said, the BBC News site is really good for these things. It's another one here, van customers, as in vans, the shoes, not vans, the things you drive. There was a fraud risk breach just back in 20th of March. Um, no detailed information or passwords were stolen. So if you bought anything from vans, you, you're safe. Don't worry about that. But this BBC site is pretty good. So I've linked to the cyber attacks and it's a good section to look at because it gives you the most up to date thing. The cyber attacks don't hit the news very often anymore unless they're massive. But if we look here in the past week, there's been 
some stories and videos. Pupils miss classes as school cyber attacks rise. It's worrying. Why would you want to attack a school? So there's lots of information on here. Another really good website I found was this one here, which is about significant cyber incidents. So this is the big stuff and it gives you in months as well. So in March, there's been quite a few things happening. There's some information about it. You're more than capable and welcome to Google that. Oh, sorry, search it up. Um, lots of different hacks and it goes back quite far. I'm not going to keep scrolling because there's lots and lots and lots and lots of them. Let me go back to this presentation. Biggest attacks, again, lots. Um, notable ones, Marriott Hotel had a data breach. Unfortunately, poor Marriott was um, target three times within a very short space of time. We have the WannaCry ransomware. There was an attack on the UK, Ukraine power grids. 2014, Yahoo were attacked. I know that was um, 10 years ago. Adobe have had cyber attacks. PlayStation Network, there are loads and loads and loads of huge ones. And this article here gives you information on the top 10 biggest cyber attacks in history. <coughs> that's where these, these are as well. So you can read a little bit more about them too. Along with that, I like infographics and websites. I think they make the world look a, a nicer place. There is um, some information on data breaches and data hacks. These two say the same links, but they go to different places. So I do apologize. This website is really useful. It's taking a wee while to load. My internet's not doing very well today. And this has got the world's biggest data breaches and hacks. And it's quite a nice image. So we can scroll all the way back down to whenever it started, This they started gathering the information. And we have AOL. And we get over the years, a couple of things mentioned. There was no legal requirement for any data breaches to be reported at this time. There probably was a lot more happening than what we know about. And as we come further up the years, it starts getting busier. Sony PlayStation Network was the one I talked about earlier. If you hover over and you can click as well, it takes you onto the news story and it gives you a summary of what happens. You'll find when we look at any cyber attacks, it's really hard to put a value of money towards it because there can be ongoing costs over the years that you might get rough figures. What you will find is how many records have been affected and how long they were offline for um, statistics like that. But numerical is a little bit harder to work out. You can obviously click or hover over these little ones too, which I like to think the bigger the circle, the more impact it had, but not always because that's some, still some amount of records that are being lost. And we keep scrolling. There's loads and loads. This is updated, um, not all the time, but it's still a really good site to have a look at to see what's been going on and find information out about it. You see common names as well. Facebook comes up quite a few times. Microsoft comes up. Um, this one makes me laugh. We're going to be talking about Windows in a couple of weeks, I think. But um, yeah, they, they lost records over 14 years because it didn't have password protection on it. Same interesting from a computing company. Not here to name and shame them. It does make you laugh. This one here is the data breaches down to data sensitivity. So it's slightly different. Oh, no, it's not. It's taking me back to the same one. Oh, no. So there is another one here, which I've got on this side here on my presentation. And it shows you data breaches by data sensitivity and it's email addresses, password details, and it gives you what the breaches were and what was it that was actually lost. So on this one here with the passwords, Facebook was hit a few times. Personal details were affected. Uh, Yahoo down the bottom as well. It's on the same website. And then hopefully you've all had a look at the live threat maps. It shows you what's going on on a daily basis. There's a couple of them. Um, they all pretty much have similar information. It's just a different way that it's displayed. I like this one just because it starts off with a rotating earth to begin with and then zooms in on where you're going. But you can see overall what's happening in the world. And it's quite interesting to watch. 
you lose a lot of time watching these things. My classes like to sit with them on in the background sometimes and pretend they're working, but they're just looking at pretty pictures. This one's as a whole, um, because we're based in the UK, it's picked that up. It's the 23rd most attacked country. Interesting. And we have another one as well, which is a little bit more um, flat. I like this one because it's a little bit simpler and uh, it gives you the terminology down the bottom as to what each thing is as well. So these are just interesting pieces of information to see what's going on in the world. Remember, these don't necessarily have to be violations. It could be that they're doing testing on their own network or with somebody else. So don't always assume the world has been very mean to each other. It does look like it sometimes when you watch these maps. And then one thing to think about, Nicole talked about this as well, is your own security. At home, you lock the door when you leave the house. Hopefully, you remember to lock the door when you leave the house. You need to make sure you're putting locks on your things as well. So simple stuff like passwords, and we talk about passwords all the time, and everybody's fed up of hearing about passwords, but they really do make a difference. And it's about the password complexity, not password being one, two, three, four, five, because that's the easiest thing you'll remember. It's about making sure that it's a unique and strong one for your account, and you're being aware of what you're sharing online as well, because anything you share online can be used for social engineering and phishing to get information from you. Avoid anything that looks suspicious, links or emails. Don't click on things you have no idea where they came from. And if you do get something that you're not sure about, don't click on that link and go to that website and self your, instead yourself. So if it's a bank one, go straight to your bank. And make sure you keep your devices and security, up, uh, sorry, software updated. We get updates for a reason. I know they're annoying, but make sure you're updating because that is protecting your machine and it's protecting what you're doing as well. And just as a summary, use strong passwords as we talked about. Make sure you keep your software updated. Use encryption. Use multi-factor authentication. Training people. This says employees, but it involves training everybody. Train your mum, your dad, your granddad, your next door neighbour, anybody that you think might not be sure, just to make sure they're aware of what they should be doing. Train your younger siblings as well, if you've got any, because they might not know either. Make sure you deploy security tools, so looking at firewalls, antivirus software, and make sure they're updated as well. We can do some regular monitoring. We can make sure we've got instant response plans. We can look at disaster recovery. What do we do if, if we're hacked, what's the next step? And make sure you stay informed about emerging threats. So have a look at what's going on in the world. Stay in touch with BBC News website, for example, and see what hacks and attacks are happening. And it's all about being safe and secure. So hopefully that has given you a little bit to look at about cybersecurity and the threats. Nicole, have you got anything to add? No, I think um, between both our, our, myself and Bryony, we've covered main points in cybersecurity. Um, it's really, really important that you do have your strong passwords and that you do ensure you have that cybersecurity awareness. Um, I know there's a number of different short courses out there um, that can be done um, around the basics. Yeah, okay. And I think that's us. So thank you, everybody, and we will see you in the next one. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Stop sharing first and then get...